Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to Traders Workshop. I'm your host, Tom Schneider with Ninja Trader and Traders Workshop. We'd like to bring in experts from our Ninja Trader ecosystem to explain what they do, use their, how to use their tools, how to give you an edge in trading. I'm really excited to introduce our next guest, but real quick, I just want to remind everybody that futures and options trading contains substantial risk, not for every trader. You could potentially lose all or even more than all of your initial investment. So we suggest that you use risk capital. What is risk capital? Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose, doesn't keep you up at night, doesn't extend your retirement horizon. I also want to remind everybody that past performance is not indicative of future results and that the information that we'll be talking about today on today's show contains neither trade advice nor investment advice, but rather should be used for educational purposes only. So with that out of the way, I'm really excited to welcome Gavin Holmes to Traders Workshop. How are you doing, Gavin? Thank you, Tom. It's uh, broadcasting here live from the uh, New Forest National Park. And as we're on air here, I've just seen two deer walk past the garden. So that's oh. gonna be a that's gonna be a first. That's never happened for a while because we got a new fence here. But now we're in a beautiful area of the world, if anyone knows it, called Burley which is on the south coast of England and um, right opposite the Isle of Wight. And uh, my trading office overlooks a forest on my right and the sea on the left. So it's a nice, relaxing place to do business. And we talk about, often Jim and I talk about uh, reducing stress, right? As much as we can, we like, like to keep stress reduced. So it sounds like you've got the perfect environment for trading. I, I have a routine every morning. I, I stick to it. I, I go for a walk. Uh, I've got two spaniels, so I'm up at six to take them for a walk for about half an hour, come back, 15-minute meditation, which just takes me very – just relaxes me. Uh, but no coffee, no tea, but fresh orange juice. I do. I'm, I think I just mentioned to you I'm, I'm running the London Marathon, so I'm in a fitness regime, and part of it is um, – fresh juices, fresh vegetables, and lots of muesli in the morning. And that sets me up for my trading day, really. Love it. <laughs> I, that's great. That's great. So, um, you know, we, we're excited to have you here. I, I, I was looking at some of the concepts we'll be talking about. We've talked before just a little bit. I think it's really, really funny, a really small world. We both have something in common, right? That's right. Uh, my wife uh, is from Darien in Illinois. I, I imported her to the forest a few years ago. But yes, and uh, knows some of your friends. So it's a very small world. We've never met, have we? So, yeah. No, quite, no. It's a good story. No, uh, you know, having you on and, and, you know, you've known Jim, Jim for a while, right? You've known Jim for a bunch of years. And uh, so that's the great thing about this show is I get to meet a, a lot of new people. And, um, but funny small world, my wife from the same town as your wife and we're you know however many thousands of miles away right it's pretty crazy six, six degrees of separation as they say it's all one that's, world it's that's right cool. that's right so gavin let's just talk about uh, i'm curious to know how you got into the trading world we've had guests on who've come from different backgrounds they haven't been like some of the people uh like jim right jim jim stepped off of uh, out of school onto a trading floor basically and did that um, you know, his entire professional life, but you've had a different track. Do you want to, do you want to just, you know, expound on what you've done that got you to this place today? Right. So I started my career as a police officer with the Metropolitan Police, which I don't think you knew that in, in London. Um, but I was injured on duty after five years. So my whole, my whole career as it, it had gone and I decided if, well, I didn't know what to do at the time so I went to um, get a job from an agency and they just came up and said well there's a really good opportunity with an exhibition design business long story short I took the job was very successful for five years and then I started my own business um, in London and um, we turned over about five million pounds in the first year so it was a really successful business um, but through it, I met a guy who, who approached me because I started an internet company with my business partner, Richard, at the same time. And his name was Tom Williams, Tom George Williams. Um, and he was a very famous syndicate trader from Beverly Hills in uh, California. Um, he was in there in the 1970s, early 80s. And uh, but it's a long story. But briefly, he moved over there because he figured if you want to make money, you go where the money is. And he thought Beverly Hills, there's money there. So he was a state registered nurse in the UK. And his second job that he got 
was managing a drug addict who was running a large trading syndicate. You, well, you'll never be told about these syndicates. They're, they're very, they were, they, they're still around, but they're very secretive. And they trade large size. And in fact, um, Tom Williams, who, who, who taught me everything, explained to me how, how it, it operated. And I was absolutely amazed. And I decided that there was a journey here. I just instinct and my business partner and I both decided to buy the company, as a long story from Tom, which was called Genie Chartist at the time. It's now called Trade Guider. And it looks at what we call the Wyckoff method of trading, which we've computerized. We have it in, in Ninja Trader. And in fact, as I mentioned to you earlier, I've got one of the first 1918 copies of the book by Richard Wyckoff, which had 250,000 um, um, subscriptions back in the days without the internet. And it's all about chart reading, tape reading, looking at long-term stocks as they were in those days. And um, long story, I became uh, a trader under Tom's tutorship. I sold my business, so I had money. And um, it was a few years later after being with Tom that I wrote my first book called Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money. And I was on a journey. And now we have an asset management division that's based in Gibraltar, um, which is an island just off Spain here. And we, we manage money off there. And then I trade live doing seminars like this seminar, um, trading our live account. And I've been, as I said, I've been a friend of Jim Cagnina's for nearly 20 years. It's a long time. So we appreciate you inviting us on this show. It's always good. Oh, for sure. That's great. And I did a little bit of research. Tom, uh, Richard Wyckoff had that magazine that you have. He published that magazine over 100 years ago for yeah. it seemed like uh maybe eight to ten years maybe a little bit longer but it was called the magazine of wall street and uh fairly like you said a quarter of a million subscribers back then is is you know pretty incredible when you when you think about that putting that magazine out and and didn't you say do you have a full run of that of, of his of his magazine i've got i've got just three or four of them here <laughs> and right. I, I i was only given them a few weeks ago and i've read half of them um and absolutely fascinating but that was in 1918 but in 1966 when just when i was born there was a guy called richard nay some of you will have heard of richard nay he wrote the wall street gang the wall street jungle all about how the markets are being moved by big money often on on news and i've got this book which is actually signed a signed copy by richard nay and again the information in this book is what we teach You've got to understand the markets do not move accidentally. They move on supply and demand. And that's really what Trade Guider is all about and makes us very unique in the uh, in the industry. That's that's really interesting. So, you know, we're so you start as a uh, we call a police officer in the city. You moved over and you you quickly found uh, now did um, Tom Williams, did he find you or did you yeah. find him? He found no, he you. Found that's pretty impressive, right? Yeah, for our um, website, he was looking, he, he was unfortunately uh, had macular degeneration, so he couldn't read the charts and he okay. wanted to market his software. He'd, he'd, he'd never done any, mar he didn't know much about marketing. And my company was called Energy Marketing and it had web design, it had the possibility to go to shows and he rung me out the blue. I mean, it literally was, I didn't expect it. And I was so busy that day. And he said, I really want to come and see you. Can I, can I come and visit your offices? And I don't know what it was. Call it gut instinct, call it a sixth sense. But I thought, I'm going to give this guy a chance. I don't know, I don't know anything about finance. I go, no financial history. And again, when, when I told him that when he first met me, he said, then you're going to make a very good trader for me to teach because you've got no bad habits. And that's, he, he came to the office. We had two meetings at my office. Then I went down to Worthing, where he lived. And um, it was very soon after that um, I decided that I was going to move. We got we bought the company and I was going to move to Chicago to open a Chicago office, thanks to the relationship with Jim Cagnina. And um, it was it was just a journey. And it's, I can't I mean, I can't tell you it in 10 minutes. It's too, too amazing to say and now I'm sitting here trading for a living, teaching. I've written two books. I'm on my third and, you know, life is brilliant, you know, and I, I know it's a special business, but if you're grateful and you believe in your ability, which I, I know with people that use our software, if they believe in it, 
then they've become successful with it. And it does take, I can, when I show you the gold chart later on, you'll see why it's very strange that you should sell the market as it's going up on high volume. <laughs> well, it's going up, Gavin. Stochastic says long, MACD says long, everything says long. See how many times you get stopped out when you buy at the top. I'll show you why. Right. So uh, let's let's go. Let's move to that point. So uh, the Wyckoff method. Can you explain that in uh, you know for somebody who's new to trading? Can you explain what what the Wyckoff method is? Yeah. So a lot of the information on this, to keep it simple, is on that, the website volumespreadanalysis.com. It's just one website, volumespreadanalysis.com. It's got all the history talking about Jesse Livermore, you know, all the famous traders of their day. But, but Wyckoff was different because he realized that the markets did not move by accident, that the, the stocks were being manipulated by big players like Jesse Livermore, Otto Kahn, JP Morgan. And he could see on the tape, by the ticker tape that was coming out, he'd get um, people that were working for him to start reading the tape. So what we are, we're tape readers. That's what we do. But we do it now with computerized technology. But the Wyckoff method is all about understanding that the large operator moves and manipulates. And in his day, it was all about stocks. But if you read Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money, my book, I've taken it into a whole new level. Um, I talk about the stories there of the Barclays LIBOR situation and what happened there. And I've given an example of how when British Petroleum collapsed in price, professional money were buying the week after they said, we cannot cap the world. That's a true story. And you see the volume coming in, like I'm seeing right now in gold, and you can see that big money buy on low and they sell at the tops. Why people don't get that? Because a lot of retail traders, they buy the tops and then they sell at the low. You won't, you won't do that if you become a trade guide or customer. And indeed, the platform that I'm using and have been very happy with is Ninja Trader. It's got everything. Wonderful platform. And you'll see, you know, the, the, the indicators. We don't have sell and buy signals per se. We have setups. And, and, and that's what we'll teach you. And obviously, we're limited for time today, but at some point, I'm sure we'll do a session with, with some live trading. We're happy to show you that. But the markets move on three universal laws, supply and demand, cause and effect, and effort versus result. And the fourth universal law that isn't on the charts but will help you is to understand the law of attraction, which works. And it's in Chapter 9 of my book, What Happened to Me When I Went to the Traders Expo and, and Traded Live, one of my first competitions, was all something that just well read the book. I won't I won't spoil the chapter. Chapter nine. It's an interesting one. Sounds good. Sounds good. So um, going back to the volume spread analysis, uh, the Wyckoff method. You say that um, the markets are being manipulated. We might look at that as uh, somebody with a lot of influence or or in, uh, investment banks, possibly hedge funds. In this day and age, right? It's different a hundred years later they're going to come in and they're going to take a position. Uh, but where, how can you identify that? Or, you know, you mentioned gold, you mentioned uh, there's a lot of volume. Is it the, the volume spike that we see? Is it something else that we can see? You know, how, how, do, how would somebody identify it uh, using NinjaTrader? Okay, so a few things to keep in mind here. So it, 10, 15 years ago, if I said the word markets are being rigged or manipulated by big players, and it's not it, its not just big institutional banks, it's syndicates that exist that pull their money. They're very secretive. I don't care. To be, I don't, you know, I do know a few uh, individuals that are very high net, net worths. But the point is, we are chart readers. So we want to identify what we call imbalances of supply and demand as they move in and out the market. Now, as you'll see, when very high volume appears, let's say we're going to look for shorts, it'll, hear, it'll happen as the market goes up. Usually it happens on good news as well. So you get good news, the market says good, good earnings reports or something, anything to do with gold. It could be, um, oh, you know, there's so-and-so just told us he's going to buy X amount of gold and dump Bitcoin. All of this goes on. And the media quite rightly report this. The chart then moves up on high volume and people say to me, well, Gavin, that high volume's buying because the price went up. It's not. Completely wrong. 
It's if you sit now, there are times when you will get the high volume coming in and it goes up, but there are certain setups in the software that's in Ninja Trader, which will allow us to see actually that is genuine buying and support, depending on where the, pro the price has closed. Does it close on the top on that volume, the middle or the bottom? It's all relevant. And today in gold, we saw a guarantee. It was, it was, I'm surprised, you know, I'm doing this interview with you and I'm thinking that you know, some days nothing happens, but today, <laughs> You know, again, it's, it, it happens, and you'll see why. And uh, the, 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 the weakness appears on up moves, and it's a complete opposite. It happens on down moves, you know, to buy. When you're going to buy something, like with the BP chart, which is at the front page of volume spread analysis.com, uh, you'll see that the buying comes in when the big footprint comes in. But they call it the footprint of the elephant. And I've done – there's lots of stuff on the YouTube channel, um, youtube.com trade guider, there's two recent examples that we've posted on there um, where you can see why the big volume has, has made the, um, the dollar much stronger against the pound and the euro. I've been short the euro and the pound today. Well, why? Because I, I did a webinar just before this one with another company and, and they said, I'm still short and you know, I'll, I'll upload that video. But it was because of what was going on. That, that, that's why gold is weakening as well. So there's a lot of opportunity right now, in my opinion. And that opportunity, you, you mentioned the dollar. It seems I look at the I look at the market analyzer and I see everything's down today, with the exception of the dollar. Right. So, you know, the dollar is is up today. Do you, yeah. you know, using that? Uh, I don't know if it's cross asset, but it's that that relationship. Are you looking at one relationship? as a key to the rest of the relationships that say, well, if this does this, then the others will do that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. We, we just finished a course this weekend, actually, or last weekend, which we did at my property. We had all customers come in um, to the house here in Burley, loads of people online and a guy called Sebastian Manby, who's a good friend of mine is an expert in correlation and using the trading DOM, which we're going to be showing you maybe in the next session. We can't do it today the um, Ninja Trader DOM and how you can look at the, the different flow between, let's say the S&P and the NASDAQ. If big money are moving into the S&P and they're a little bit delayed in the NASDAQ, we can see it on the chart, we can see it on the DOM. Um, but that's something I can't touch on here. It, it, we did the course on it and it, it was very well received, but you have to see it to understand it. it it's not something I could cover in two minutes. It's, it's just, it's a way of looking at the big money and the ticker tape, which we can see on, on, on the, um, the depth of market. And we can see what, you know, when it's confirmed in VSA, then, then and we have other systems that track um, and scan the markets in real time in multiple timeframes for when these setups are actually appearing. So uh, can we can we take it, let's, let's go to the charts uh, now. I think it's a good time to go in and just see an example of something. And let's just break it down a little bit to see, you know, how, how your chart recognizes the the opportunities or the setups uh, using uh, VSA. Okay, so if you want to, um, can you see my chart? There it is. Yes. All right. So Ninja Trader Eight with the Smart Center Pro plugin, which we um, have, we we have various um, levels of products, but Smart Center Pro is the professional version that, that most professionals use, and we use. Um, at the Gibraltar Asset Management Division. Now, there's a couple of things I'm going to draw your attention to. I don't want to um, highlight everything because there's other charts we can, go, we can go and look at. But I've got the scanner open at the moment. And let me just move this over to it for a second here. And what I'll do is if I just bring that down, and we should be able to see something called a scanner. Okay. Now, you should see in the center of the scheme there, Tom, uh, a flashing things with all the futures uh, built into Ninja Trader, and it says it's VSA Smart Center Pro. Okay, can you see that? So, yeah. um, Gavin, just so you know, we just see the chart. Right. Um, okay. You probably can't see it. That doesn't, so, matter. doesn't matter. Yeah, it's because it's a separate screen. So, what I'd have to right. do? Yeah, I think I'd have to. Well, don't actually. Don't worry about that's, it now. Sorry. That's fine. Um, we'll look at the chart. Yeah, because yeah. you can go to, when you go to the YouTube video and look at what we've got on YouTube. It shows that. No problem at all. So there's sure. a couple of things we're going to look at. Now, this is the 15-minute um, the chart, and you can hear all the alerts going off that I've set in the system, even because the markets are obviously trading. So those little bells, and you might hear um, various sounds, they all mean something. 
coming from the smart technology. So I'm going to start off with what we call two, or two things, distribution and reaccumulation on this 15 minute chart. Now distribution is basically selling. And what we can see up at the top here is we have a red indicator just after this one that came in. Now, the way the system works is if we're trending up and we see a red indicator, we don't wanna be short right there. What we wanna wait for is the support line to actually be taken out, which it, which it was over here. But what happened on these two bars is what's driving price right now. And we've just had, and since we started, a VSA indicator, which is a very important one. So, now, so Gavin, I'm just going to interrupt real quick. We're looking at the micro Bitcoin, just so everybody knows what we're looking at. We're looking at a daily chart of the micro Bitcoin. Is that correct? Yeah, you should be on the 15 minute chart of gold. So let me just. Uh, I think we have the daily daily micro Bitcoin up. So okay, now uh, I can move, I can I can just put the other trade up of gold. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So if I put that up, see. I think I think you're sharing just the Bitcoin chart. Okay, so let me might have to share and we'll see Jason if this uh, if you switch the sharing to the screen or that other chart we'll see how that works well actually let me go to the micro Bitcoin myself because that's what you're saying you're seeing is the MBT yeah which uh, I have. MBT on a, on a daily basis yes that's, yeah okay I can I can do exactly the same thing it doesn't matter but yeah Excellent. so I th yeah that's fine so this again has got the very high volume and as the market is marked up. Now, Bitcoin here is now trading right down at 19,000 that you're down here. Let's look at the start of what we call distribution. You're going to look at the volume as the market increases, but I want you to look at the range of the bars as we get up to the top up here. Um, because what we have is something called an indicator. Now, I don't know if you can see the indicator box when I click on it, but it actually has a dialog box. Um, you probably can't see it because I've got to share the, um, the the individual box with you. So don't worry about it. But it, I'll, I'll read what it says about this bar. It says, sign of weakness number two, uh, 52, selling pressure. Uh, the bar should be an up bar on high volume and closing off the highs. Now, an up bar is a price bar that closes higher than the closing bar. OK, so that's the first thing it says. And it says, if volume is ultra high, this adds to the weakness and the volume is indeed ultra high on the bar. It causes then for the, uh, the daily Bitcoin to fall for nearly a week. And then we have the opposite happening right underneath here. And here we have green indicators that attempt to support the coin on this bar here. But then we get a secondary rally. And this indicator here, which I'm pointing at, has got very, very high volume on it. This comes up with an indicator box. Again, I'll read it to you. It says, sign of weakness 148. Weakness has appeared. Bar description. Every indicator has a bar description on it. And there's about 260 indicators in the software. And they all have a trading plan that's explained as to when to take a trade. Now, in Bitcoin, of course, this is the, the, the daily chart that, that we're currently looking at. If you were looking at this on a smaller time frame, it works in exactly the same way. Because what happened here, and here's the clue, on this bar, we got a very narrow spread as it reached the top up here. Okay, this, this happened uh, last year. We then had a clue that there must be more sellers than buyers coming in by what happened the very next daily bar. It closed on its low and then collapsed. Let me just shut these windows on a sec. Come on, give me a minute because the dogs are out. There you go. Yeah, I've got two lovely little spaniels, but they do like to, to bark. <laughs> and then here, as we start to come down, we can quite clearly see we are in a downtrend now in Bitcoin. We're still in a downtrend in Bitcoin. And where we're seeing the weakness coming in is as the market starts to trend down, you get these up moves, okay? And this one says, Selling pressure. Where it's very interesting right now is where we're currently at. Because what we've got is a gap down bar just here. Okay, now, if I change this to a weekly chart, tell me if you can see it. It should work. Right. Now, that's got, can you see the weekly chart? Yes. Just, For sure. Right. 
Right. Now, we know that this is a, um, a fairly new contract, so you can see it's got as many bars, but we see here, and where we're at here, a couple of very interesting points. So the reason I've put candlesticks on this is because a lot of traders um, use candlesticks and they say, well, okay, can we use candlesticks with VSA? Well, let's have a look at these two bars here, which mark the top again. Okay, this is what we call an upthrust bar. Now, it's a very serious sign of weakness because on that bar, the professional money have marked the price up, but it's closed on its low. Think about that. A lot of traders bought Bitcoin in here, but there was a clue as to how why, well, there's several clues now where it's going. Let's look at the last indicator here, and we'll go there. And you're going to see right here that bar there. Okay. And on that bar here, we have got a very low volume. You can't see the volume on there, but I can see it on the screen. It's very, very low. And that is what we call no demand. And no demand happens when the market is in a downtrend. That's very important. And it tries to rally on very low volume. Now, let's have a look at the live chart and see what's happening right now. Now, I'm not going to take a trade, but I'll put up the five minute chart. OK, so you should all be able to see that. Can you see that fine? Sure, John? yeah, that looks great, yeah. Okay, Five-minute chart works. Okay, good. So let's start with um, the volume thermometer, which is down here. I'm going to make that a bit bigger. Right. So what I want to do is explain to you these the significance of this red box here. i the volume off for a second, just so you can see the trending tool. Now, where this market today on this five-minute chart starts to change behavior is right in here, as you can see. We get a downtrend coming in. When we start to see this downtrend aligning with the medium-term trending system, which we've got here, the two things that are in what we call, well, I wouldn't call them correlation. That's not the right word. They are aligned to the, to the negative side. With volume spread analysis, one of the most important setups to recognize is in a downtrend, if the market goes up and the volume begins to de decrease, and you see that very clearly on, let's put, put the daily chart back up, just here, right there. And here, what we can see is the trending system operational. So where's this likely to go? Now, I don't want to confuse everyone with point and figure charts, but that's a likely projection for, for the Bitcoin market. And there's one clue here that this market is particularly weak. And that is this bar right here. It's the gap down bar after these two red indicators. And that tells us, and um, Wyckoff told us this years when he, you know, back in the 20s. In, in this book, in this Wall Street magazine, he talks about why a market will, be, will weaken in a downtrend as it attempts to go up. And that's where he would have placed short positions. On the opposite side, when we get a, a, an up move and the market then corrects on very, very low volume, we call that a test. And it's a very, very, very powerful sign of, um, um, sign of strength because the market's pulling back in an uptrend on very light volume. And in fact, we saw it over here. This green indicator here is called a test. So in, su in summary, on these charts, um, the most important thing is to use multiple time frames. You can't see the scanner on the left, unfortunately, because of the way this projects. But I can tell you that if you go to the YouTube channel, you'll be able to see that, that in Bitcoin, all of the, the time frames are now aligned red. And I'm talking about the monthly, the weekly, the daily, the four hour and the hour are the main ones I use, are all aligning to, to the downside, which if you're thinking of buying Bitcoin, be very, very cautious. And of course, with this contract on the CME, you can short it. So, um, and you can short Bitcoin in, in, in the cash as well. So is there any questions so far before we move on to some other charts? So, let's, see so let's look at... Um... <clears throat> Not so much a question, a comment from Sai Srinivas, yeah. uh, joined to here. 
you, Gavin, and says your book taught me to understand the market. Thank you so much. I do want to give a shout out to Anissa and Elizabeth and as well, Cy, uh, for, for joining us. And please, anybody who does have questions for Gavin, uh, just drop them in the YouTube chat chat that's there. Um, you know, we'd love to take your questions and, and answer them during this, uh, during this segment. Um, so, you know, we've looked at Bitcoin. You you did mention gold. Can we can we take a look at gold? I think and, we can. And see. What I have to do, what I have to do, I think, is stop sharing this screen and then go and share gold, correct? Let's that's see now that Yep. So we've we fixed that. So uh, yeah. So it's just a screen a screen sharing thing. So this is the chart I wanted to show you. Actually, the one I was talking about when I was looking at Bitcoin. It's a classic example. Fifteen minute chart. You've got what we call key areas of distribution, and we've got what I wrote in my book. If you read it, it's got the mushrooming over. But what happened over here in these two last bars before the collapse was what happens. It was caused by what started in these bars. And again, I'm not sure if you can actually see that now with the up thrust. That, yeah, you can see yes. it now. Yes, yeah. I can see it. So we, we've learned something for the next one. Um, so rather than sharing a window, we share the entire screen. So this is, exactly. I'm going to just repeat what I said a few minutes ago, but this is this is the up thrust. This is a false breakout bar. It's designed to catch retail traders that see the, the market moving higher on, on an increase in volume, but they don't observe that the price is closed near the low of the bar. All right, so they, they miss that. The software tells us this. The bar is marked up but falls off rapidly to close on or near its low with an average to wide price spread, which is, this is very high, actually. It's not just average. Okay, if it closes as a down bar, this is normally a sign of strength, but this one doesn't. It closes just level with the next bar. Now, watch what happens as the market basically gets ready for its big move. And I'm not even sure what the cause necessarily was, but what I did notice this morning, and let's just bring that up a little bit. And we'll bring it. There we go. Over here, we're going to start with the first area of what we call distribution, okay, which is here. So it says, and you can all see this now, sign a witness 26, supplier coming in. OK, now that market's going up on a 15 minute chart and it's produced a red indicator. And the volume was the most significant volume that we'd seen for all of these bars. Massive. That's the gorilla in the room. That that there is professional money unloading. And they've pushed the price up on the high volume, hoping that retail traders will say, oh, look, for the last hour, the MACD has been going up, the stochastics going up. But we get a red indicator there and it's in a downtrend. Because the trend, how do we know it's down? We can see at the bottom here, the trending system is negative from this point here, which is to the left, which is our what we call medium term trending system. And this is all proprietary to Trade Guider, and it's built into um, the system, into Ninja Trader. The short term trending system is aligning. And then we get two bars together, which is quite unusual, but it does happen. And it's a very, because it's in a downtrend, it's where we would expect to see it in the right place. You get supply coming in, followed by the upthrust. Now, if you don't know what these words are, there is a book. It's my second book that's available at tradeguider.com. And it's the, the books are free if you if you get a PDF. And it explains what these things do. But but Tom, just to explain the word the upthrust, but it's a, it's a very powerful um, shorting opportunity when it's in a downtrend, especially. But you see a lot of that. Uh, um, and I know this because I was doing a, 
an interview with someone and I said, look, there's an ump thrust here. And he said, oh, that looks to me like in hindsight, it's a false breakout. That's what these things are. They're, they're, they're false breakouts. And you see these all the time. They're not unusual. But once you can recognize the very unusual volume footprint. Now, something more interesting. Look at what happened down here. The market stopped, not forever, but there's a lot of volume on this last bar. And it tells me there is potential professional buying. Note the word potential. Here is the setup. This is what this is how we trade it in Wyckoff Williams, the asset management division. We wait. We wait. The reason we don't buy here is we're still in a downtrend. All right. So we 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 wait. It's two things we wait for. And you can follow this through yourselves. The first thing is the middle of this bar needs to be penetrated in the next day, or it could even be in the next few hours. So it needs to penetrate. What we want to see is a red, a uh, green indicator come in, which says test at this level, test. So it pulls back. You can always already see the volume is getting less and less on this test. This bar here was the London fix, which happened. Um, well, it was just prior to what we call the LIBOR fix. So that's when I get most of my trades. The best place to, if you're going to invest and buy gold, if it takes the top of this bar out um, anytime this week, that would be a place we would see a bounce because that volume, as we can see, is stopping the market. It stopped it. So it's been going down and down and down and down. And at the moment, it's holding its price level, both at the bottom here and the bottom here. And so we, we, we wait and you have to be patient. In this business, you're, you're paid to be patient. And that's exactly what happened. And this is this this will set up. And I just want to show you one other trade that I took because I think well this should work now. Um, and this is going to be the British pound today. And there we go. Okay, and that's the British pound thirty minute. I'm going to put the five up because it's more interesting. And what do you see? Look at that. So Big the pound. Count. Right. Massive, big, yeah, big massive. gap today, and it it was very, very obvious actually on a bigger time frame that it was setting up. I'll use the sixty minute chart for you. Okay, now this this was to, I, I don't I don't know if this was news related. I think it's just that as we were talking about earlier, Tom, that the dollar index was was definitely or the dollar itself was getting stronger. But when we saw what happened in gold. And we now look at what happened here. We can see the weakness. This, this is this top here. If I had a pen, I'd draw it for you. From here over here, where these red indicators are, is what we call a phase of distribution. Okay. And you mark the, 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 the supply coming in. And you'll notice that in the future, it will come into the same area with the same type of setup. Supply coming in. Supply coming in over here. End of a rising market. Strongest indicator. I said I'd, I'd show it. That's what we saw um, the other day. It's the strongest indicator in the Trade Guider software program in the plugin. And it will mark the top when that is seen. And you might say, well, that's in hindsight, Gavin, but it was there. It does. They don't disappear, these indicators. And how is it defined? How do we know that's at the top there? Look at the range of the bar. Right, the high and the low of the bar compared to the other bars, which have got wider ranges. It's narrow. The volume is absolutely massive, which we can see. It closes in the middle. If that was all buying in, the, in that bar, it would close near the top or even have a wider spread. But that isn't the clue. The clue is what happens on the next bar. It closes lower than the close of this bar. And then the decline begins. And all the way down, you see the same things going on because weakness, when it appears, appears on these up moves like this. Weakness, and here, just before the gap, we had two signs of weakness. So it, it sounds odd to people. They say, well, it doesn't make sense, surely. It does make sense because you can see it. The chart doesn't lie. The chart doesn't lie. Is there any questions on that, Tom, from anyone? Because now we can see it. Um, it's yeah, actually... 
we do have a question from Sai again. Uh, which time frame do you suggest for the intraday? We've looked at 60 minutes. We've looked at, I think, five minutes we had up there. I think we had 15 minutes earlier. Um, Sai is asking, what do you suggest? And these kind of questions I generally answer with, it's up to you, which is kind of a cop out, right? But, um, you know, it's it also it somewhat depends on your trading style and how often you want to trade as well. Do you have any, uh, can you, how, how would you answer that question, Gavin? Well, now you can see Smart Center Pro. I'm, I, I, I trade multiple time frames. I tend to execute off the five and the 15. What you're seeing here is trade alerts that went off earlier that I was trying to show you on all these instruments. Very simply put, what it does is it looks at the, de the diamond trending system and the medium term trending systems. And when they align, it will let's have a look at the, well, you can use the yen as an example. You've almost got total alignment. So look at the time frames we're looking at on even on the yen here. The weekly chart is down. And four weeks ago, we had the no demand bar followed by weakness. That's why the yen was going down the 6J. Here, we had a reversal on the daily chart on the yen. And it's the same all the way through. And if I then pull up, um, let's pull up the euro. That's another one that's given an alert today. Actually, I'll tell you what, I've just had an alert on, the, I will show the, I know a lot of people trade the S&P. Okay, so just bear with me. It just came in on the E-mini. Right. You know, one thing I really like about the indicators, Gavin, is the uh, explanation of the indicators as you hover above it or, um, you know, you see the box and it explains what is happening and what's to be expected. I just think that is brilliant. This is the, this is the weekly chart. And thank you, Tom. This is this is the start. I want to just show everyone these two bars. OK, so here weekly chart, no demand at the top, which means there's no interest. And then here, just before the big decline, no more demand. So you've got no demand at market top. That's described in the book. But the alert that just came in was on the, was the five, I think it was. And let's. No, let's go to the, the daily chart. Bear with me. I'm just seeing where these alerts are coming from. They're coming in all over the place. Right. Yeah. So here we can see right to the left, here, the last indicator. And it's the same one. These, the, and this is in the perfect place because the market's trending lower. And if you look at what the market does over those few days, look at the volume. That's the clue. Lack of interest from the professional side of the market. And that's why the next bar closed lower and we've had a decline. And that's called no demand. Right. I'm conscious of time. There's two minutes left. Um, sorry if there was a couple of issues there, but they, we got through them. Uh, but hopefully that's a, a flavor of, of what we do. No, this is great, Gavin. Thanks so much. It's been very interesting. And you know, certainly you were just scratching the surface. I, I can tell right away we're scratching the surface and, you know, would love to, to, you know, further the discussion in a future, future episode. I just want to, uh, something we do as part of our shows, we put in polls for the viewers and our poll question today, Gavin, is have you visited London? So we polled our, <laughs> our viewers, have they visited London? And, uh, 35% said, of course I have. 37% said, not yet, unfortunately. And 27 said, only on TV. So I don't know how that reconciles with not yet. But um, I visited London. I was last there four years for my dear sister-in-law's wedding. Uh, it was fantastic. We were out at Richmond Park, stayed right there, uh, saw some fantastic, what I don't remember what they're called, royal deer, I, huge deer. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, you wake up, you, you walk over, you grab your coffee at the local cafe and you're just, you know, 10 feet away from these huge deer that could, you know, look like they could take you. Right. But uh, they have been known to chase people around the park. Including dogs. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not an exaggeration. They do that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But it's brilliant. I love I love coming over to London every time I've had a great time. So um, but with that, I just want to, you know, one more one more thing before we go and. Um, loved having you on, Gavin. Where can people find you uh, if they want to find out more about what you do? I would, I'd highly recommend um, the uh, 
Trade Guider YouTube channel. I mean, we've got the website, which is volumespreadanalysis.com. Our main website is Trade Guider, all one word, T-R-A-D-E-G-U-I-D-E-R.com. That's got a free resources section that you can download my book for free and then go and read chapter nine. Um, and then, yeah, youtube.com forward slash trade guide has got the two latest live trading videos that we did. Um, and at some point, uh, Tom, we'll, we'll, we'll do a live, if people want to do a live trading event, we'll do a live trading event with them. That's fine. Awesome. Great. Gavin, thanks again so much. It was, uh, time goes by too fast, as you know. So um, great show. And thanks to everybody for participating in the chat. I hope you found something useful here and I hope you follow through and, and see what Gavin has to offer at his sites. Um, with that, I'd like to say have a great trading day and we'll see you later in the afternoon of bars closing. Thanks again. Tom. Thanks, Jason.